Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Lion Plays the Binding of Isaac Rebirth. Eden, not the lost. There we go, Eden. 399 tokens, man, that'll that'll keep you up at night. Good damage. Or sorry, not good damage necessarily. We got Broken Ankh, Ball of Tar, Bean, 3 HP. That's what I meant to say, 3 HP. K1, 2 D, KM, HN. I have absolutely nothing to complain about. I do also want to point out... Thank God that this is also, like, not bad. But, um, our speed seems amazing. I'm not sure if that's, uh... Oh, it's Unicorn Stump, not Unicorn Horn. That is worse right now, but potentially really, really great in the future. And also, who, who could complain about having invincibility on every single room if we want it? The only thing is, without an orbital, it doesn't give me the ability to actually hit enemies. But that's what our spiders are for, I suppose. Anyway, um... This seems really good. This seems like a very, very fine Eden start. Uh, I gotta admit, our damage leaves a little bit to be desired, but apart from that, I'm pretty pleased with the way things look here. Doesn't maybe I'm I'm getting Ball of Tar confused with Juicy Sack again, aren't I? We're not. We don't generate any spiders with Ball of Tar. It's just well, not just Juicy Sack, but it's Juicy Sack that I'm getting this confused with. I think, but Juicy Sack occasionally gives us the slow, even if we don't have the enemies over the creep. Yeah, the the, the black shots will have the chance to inflict the slow. Uh, effect. This is a good start. Um, I'm happy we got rid of the bean. The bean is immediately more offensively useful. That nickel is a huge drop as well. Um, is immediately more offensively useful for sure. However, uh, the uh, the unicorn stump has way more gain for it as the game goes on. So, if we can just get uh, a Midas touch, a turdy touch, a sacrificial dagger, or really any orbital um, poison touch, Basically, any item that has touch in it, I suppose, is gonna be, like, really, uh, up my alley right now. This should be great, or it has the chance, at least, to be great. Um, we do also have the chance to spawn an arcade on the next floor, although I will stay away from that chance if it means that I can get a spirit up. Ooh, that was a little risky. If it means that I can get a spirit heart right away on this floor and thus have a great chance of getting a deal with the devil on the next floor. Basically, that was a really roundabout way of saying if I can buy a, uh, a spirit heart from our shop and completely remove the chance of getting an arcade, I will. I would like to have the opportunity to perhaps get both, though, if uh, that's uh, in the cards for us, if that's an option. It would be awesome if this were a spirit heart. Now, that's an interesting little situation here, isn't it? I think that probably Bloody Penny is going to be better for us, uh, especially now if we get an arcade on the next floor. I am going to open this and probably regret it. Mmm... Maybe not regret, but I'm not super thrilled about it. I was hoping to get a key and some consumables. Instead, we got bombs and consumables. Now, it is a very, very bad idea in many ways to not uh, buy the Spirit Heart on this floor. But we don't have a key anymore, so we can't get into the shop. And beyond that, an arcade is so, so good for us now with Unicorn Stump and Bloody Penny. We would get a payout from it. Even if it's IV Bag, we'd get the money preceding IV Bag. And if it's Blood Bag, that's a huge get for us. So... Um, it's an interesting situation. I hope that it's solved for us. I hope we just get a Spirit Heart from this item right here. Roid Rage, that's not gonna do that. Um, I think with two bombs, we'll check right here for a secret room, and it was not there. And I will check right here for a second secret room. Not there either. I'm just gonna head down to the next floor, and I'll admit that this is probably a somewhat contentious decision. It's all, um... Indicative, or not indicative, but it's all as a result of the fact that I uh, opened that golden chest. So it was a risk. It was a risk that uh, maybe didn't work out fully the way that I would have preferred it to. These guys oftentimes do damage to me. Like, I have a super bad track record against hitting, getting hit by those MFers. Alright, we've got a really interesting situation on this room as well. Watch out for the fact that we can get flanked super easily. Watch out for the champion that shoots bullets in random directions. Really happy that we have uh, Ball of Tar here slowing down the enemies that can chase us down. Helps me out a great deal. You were like one hit away, so don't even give me this shit. Two hits? Three hits? Okay. One of those had to be right. Eventually. Don't be afraid. Like, I should get a... Um, I should get it ingrained in my head right now that if ever I'm feeling scared, just mash the space bar. It won't attack the enemy, but that doesn't really matter as long as I, uh, you know, have the chance to get myself into a position of safety, or relative safety at least. This room is going to be super annoying, but if it drops a key, even if it drops a key into the middle there, I'm going to be A-OK -okay with it. 
This is our good chain reaction type situation. Except it was not a chain reaction at all, it was just a reaction, not nearly as exciting. Please, explode yourself so that I may... Oh, well, you did it, but that's not really what I was intent... You took me too literally and didn't let me finish my sentence, you're too eager. We don't appreciate that here at this company. Yo. Yo. Oh, my lord. Any hour now. I really don't want to use my bomb to do this. Freaking finally. Uh, I would love that if we... Oh, I hate this room. I would love that if we do find an arcade on this floor, because we can take Swallowed Penny and Bloody Penny into the arcade just by, you know, using control and dropping the key, or dropping the, the trinket once we get in there. I'm still saving the key for the shop, maybe, just in case. And, uh... We could get a ton of money out of it, and of course the more money we get with Swallowed Penny, the more Bloody Penny works out for us. Okay, now we can go to shop and item room. And we cannot buy a Spirit Heart on here, so our... Saga continues, unfortunately. We could use Unicorn Stump. I'd prefer not to. I'd also very much prefer not to uh, blow up this green dude until he gets next to the Spirit Heart down here. So if you'd be so kind as to work yourself down. Ah, okay. Well, we'll blow it up anyway. Still not a Spirit Heart. <laughs> I can't help but notice. That was probably my favorite room ever. We are going to go back for our item room. I just want to sort of you know, finish off the situation before we get too into it. Larry Jr. is a very dangerous boss for us to be fighting when we can't get hit at all. Pretty easy boss to be fighting if, you know, it's just about survival, but to not get hit at all against Larry Jr. is not 100% simple, although it's going really well. <gasps> Thanks to Ball of Tar. Turned out totally fine, never a doubt in my mind. Okay, Guppy's Hairball is precedent at the very least. And uh, we still we still gain damage there, which is nice. No arcade. Do we go Swallowed Penny or Bloody Penny? Still Bloody Penny for sure. Uh, although we should take Swallowed Penny into the curse room. Well, no, we we don't need to if we're not gonna. Like I, we don't have a bomb, so disregard. And there's Guppy's collar. Holy crap! We're two thirds of the way to becoming Guppy already. Two of the least immediately useful items there, but it is what it is. Finally got to use Unicorn Stump, and actually now we could use Unicorn Stump on every room. Uh, Guppy's Hairball is not really the... it's not what you want to be investing in. You know what? I'm gonna... I'm gonna say no to this. No, I'm gonna say yes to it. It's pretty bad by itself, but it could be cool with some other synergies. We have some protection, and mostly I'm, uh... I'm feeling like Unicorn Stump will, will carry us a little bit here. And Guppy's Collar, maybe, or sorry, Guppy's Hairball maybe will be uh, more worthwhile for us than I had originally anticipated. But we'll head down to the next floor. We're one Guppy item away from almost a guaranteed win. I don't know how many times I've lost with Guppy, but it can't be many. Hopefully Strange Attractor doesn't end up completely biting me in the ass here. Curse of the Labyrinth. Uh, it's not so bad. We gotta do one room before we get Unicorn Stump going for us and... Uh, it was a very scary one, <laughs> but it worked out. Okay, no problem. All right, unicorn stump now. And again, basically just any enemies we kill with unicorn stump is going to be positive in my mind, or any damage we do with unicorn stump. We don't even have to kill them. Just getting them hurt a little bit is fine by me as well. It's not going to be easy, but again, every enemy we kill is uh, its an enemy we hadn't... We don't have to fight, and also, let's not forget that uh, Guppy's Collar, sorry, Guppy's Hairball at least gets stronger as the room goes, or bigger as the room goes on. Whether it gets stronger, I don't know, not the room, sorry, as the floor goes on. Whether it gets bigger, I have no idea, but it definitely gets uh, stronger. Place your bets on whether or not I end up hitting myself with, uh, with the hairball. I think there's a pretty good chance. Butterbean, lovely. Balls of Steel, actually really good. Bad gas, largely irrelevant. Still. With good play, I think we're actually, you know, doing a pretty good job with the hairball here. It's not as simple as if we just got an orbital, uh, but it is, it's doing the trick, man. For a, like a, kind of homemade or homebrewed uh, DIY orbital here, it's not doing that badly. Thanks for, they gave me a ton of momentum off the start there that I really appreciate. That helped me out. Give me a kickstart of my fart here. 
Ooh, kick start my phone. I really don't like Kickstart. I, I like the song Kickstart My Heart because it's catchy. You know, whoa, yeah, Kickstart My Heart, thought you'd never start, etc. But um, they they do that that self inflating thing that bands sometimes do, where like in the bridge they talk about how how their band is like it's too self aware. When we started this band, all we needed needed was a laugh. Years went by, I'd say we kicked some ass. I'm like, what? Don't you, you're already fucking millionaires. Like, why are you rubbing it in my face? That like basically the the gist of that song is well, first off, kickstart my heart, but also being in Motley Crue is awesome. Like, I don't, you don't need to tell me that. I I've been operating under that assumption for a while anyway, except for the of course the crippling narcotic addictions, but. Um, I don't, I really don't like that, uh, that trinket being there. I'm not sure if there's much we can do about it. At least it doesn't completely ruin the game like it, uh, it could have in vanilla. This is not conducive to dodging, but I'm making my own orbital here, man. I'm also making my way downtown, walking fast, uh, train is passed and I'm homebound. TerryCruz.mp4. Um, okay, you know what, just run through. Thank you. Just run through Guppy's hairball. Save me some trouble. Man, if we get a deal with the devil Guppy here, I'll be so happy. Are we stuck with the tick? Yes! <laughs> okay. That's alright. Maybe we'll get Mom's purse. And if we don't, we don't as well. That's also totally fine. I doesn't stretch far enough, man. It's useless. Oh. Oh. Thank you. I wasn't accidentally singing Gangnam Style there. I was purposely singing Gangnam Style. Whatever happened to that guy? I really thought he was around for the long haul as a crossover artist. I really thought the North American market was ready for K-pop songs in 97.5% like actual Korean. Turns out that I shouldn't have invested in Psy Industries, man. Or if I did, I should have done it before Gangnam Style came out. He's let me down, man. Hangover didn't quite sell it. Gentleman was just weird. I don't know what I'm talking about. We'll take Pentagram, though. I'm happy to be taking Pentagram. Uh, and let's see... Carrying Queen? I mean, Pentagram is like... It's not playing to my strengths, because I'm barely using my tears. Uh, but... If we could just get, like... If, if not Guppy, just give me Sacrificial Dagger, man. Like, that's actually... The easiest way to sell this run right now is just orbitals. We're not going to get a cube of meat from you, obviously. So, if you're just willing to give me uh, a chance here... Please don't take red heart damage. If you're willing to give me a chance by giving me Sacrificial Dagger, that's like a huge bone that has been thrown in my general direction. This is a really fun fight. I'm having a really good time with this so far. Um, it's not tedious in the least. Pretty much the most fun I have ever had. If you would just, uh, you know indulge me through another 30 or 40 of these revolutions, that would be fantastic. Uh, thank you. Okay. No deal with the devil and pageant boy. A little bit of a disappointment. But you know what? Thanks for the tick, I guess. Uh, it, it did make that fight a little faster. Still got shop and item room to deal with here, which I think is largely good news. There's no, like, um, momentum coefficient on the guppy's hairball, right? Like, it doesn't do more damage if it slams into an enemy versus if it just kind of touches them. I don't know. Other things that would be good for us? Samson's Chain, you know? At least we get some bonus out of the damage there. Yeah, we'll reroll our whole run. We got good damage. Holy Mantle. Um, very slow. We have one of the slowest rate of fires I think I've ever seen. It's actually abysmal. <laughs> So I'm really glad that we have Holy Mantle. It does... It actually does do a lot of damage. We must have like a Polyphemus or, or something like that going on. So all is not lost here. But certainly this is not necessarily what I uh, what I had envisioned for that reroll. But you gotta admit, Holy Mantle is great for us. Even if uh, I'm not incredibly thrilled by the fact that our rate of fire is so low. But our damage is really good. Like, we should be one-shotting enemies that are not bosses. And I think this gives us a nice little, uh, 
gives us room to grow, right? Just don't miss, even though the hitbox on the tiers is, is very small. Big fan is, well, you know, it is what it is. It's okay. RoboBaby 2.0 is garbage tier. Magic Mushroom would help out a lot. I'm starting to realize that our damage is not really good enough to compensate for how low our rate of fire is. But we can always get more tiers upgrades. We should, although, you know, reroll rooms completely fuck with our, um... Well, we were already pretty slow, but that's just ridiculous. Um, reroll rooms completely fuck with our deal with the devil precedent, in my experience, but... Tiers upgrades, they can still happen regardless. This doesn't really help out. Actually, you know what? It helps out a lot. I'm completely wrong. The speed upgrade there is is actually extremely worthwhile. I can't see us winning this run without picking up either way more damage or way more, uh, way higher rate of fire. So we're kind of uh, a little out of it right here. But I have faith that we can pull it back. And it's certainly an interesting run. Technology works really well with a lot of synergies. It does suck to lose Unicorn Stump, but it, it had been a long time since we had a reroll room. So I feel like uh, I feel like I'm pleased with my decision. We also have some kind of oh that was meaningless. Um, we also have some kind of uh, respawn. I don't know what it is yet. But we do have some kind of respawn. And we'll still be one item away from becoming Guppy. Now, Guppy, you'd rather have probably a high rate of fire, low damage than the situation we find ourselves in right now. But it is what it is. Let's uh, be on our merry way here. You know what? Butterbean got rerolled as well. My bean ran cold. My memory has just been sold. This run is not so good, but Butter... I thought it... Was it a one room? I thought it was a six room. If it was a six room, that would have done the four thing that would have rerolled Butterbean. But oh well. I'm not taking Butterbean with me, even though we have no spacebar item. Don't even... Don't kid yourself. I'm crazy, but I'm not that crazy. I'm crazy for you, but not that crazy. Where are we going here? Well, let's start to the left. Worth a shot, at least. In our own weird way, we've still kind of got um, the... the Unicorn stump thing going for us. Because we have invincibility to start each room. In this case, in the form of, uh, you know, the Holy Mantle payout. Or not payout, but, you know, literally its its ability. So I, I think it, it's going to be good for morale to use that, like, a little bit to my advantage. Uh, so if I have the opportunity, I know I'm not going to get hit twice on a room, or I've got, you know, high hopes that I won't get hit twice on a room. Why not use um, a little bit of the, the sweet big fan action? It's not really going to do that much damage, but it'll help out a little bit. Sun card? Eh. Bob's brain? I would really like for that to have been Bob's brain, actually. I don't like relying on RoboBaby 2.0 for any damage, effectively. That's a huge floor! Oh, there's one more left. I right, gotcha. Is this not... Yeah, this is an enormous floor. It's Necropolis 1. Boss Rush is not going to happen. I haven't even talked about it on this run. That's should give you some idea, I think, of, of where I'm at. I don't think this is necessarily a, a hard run. I'm just a little scared. I kind of want to see... All right, yeah. I kind of want to see if we have Judas' Shadow. Death's Touch is factoring in here. Guppies, okay, let's go through the items. It's Brother Bobby, some syringe, the heart, the pentagram, map, small rock, which probably got rerolled, I guess, because we got that earlier, I think. Technology, mini mush, pageant boy, guppy's hairball, meat, guppy's collar, rubber cement, I think. Ball of, uh, or, yeah, Ball of Tar, which we already had. Eve's Mascara, Death's Touch, Robo Baby 2.0, Big Fan, Holy Mantle, Strange Attractor, Lazarus Rags. So Lazarus Rags is our item, our, our respawn, which I don't think is a particularly strong one. So it's, it's, um, Eve's Mascara, of course, that's, that's really slowing down our rate of fire here. Eve's Mascara can be somewhat catastrophic, but in our current situation, it seems relatively okay. Mostly because our, our damage is, you know, proportionally better as a result as well. Okay, that was just the dumbest damage I've taken in a long time. We are going to need some increased rate of fire, or our damage has to just get ridiculous. 
if I'm going to be happy about this run. Or we have to get even better defensively. And the, the easiest way to make that happen would just be a... Uh, well, I guess nine lives <laughs> is one way that we could do it. Um, apart from that, the ability to fly would help out. Just wanted to give him a little bit of his own medicine there. Item room? Item room. Beautiful. And there's one thing I love about technology, even when we fire it slowly, it's really, really good against this asshole. Pick up our mind. I shouldn't call him an asshole, he's just doing his job. This is going to make our rate of fire substantially worse, but I love it because it's going to be funny. That's our rate of fire now. It's like two and a half seconds. So, for fuck's sake, don't miss. Like I just did right there. Thank God for Holy Mantle, man. This run does not, as of right now, have the tools that you need to succeed. Well, it has one of the tools. It has damage. Yes, hello. Okay, have a good time. Read some good books. Bring them back and then return them in at a reasonably responsible time. She's gone. <laughs> All right. I would never have looked here for the secret room. I'm, I'm starting to get a little nervous about this run, but I'm also smiling, so it's like a good sign, you know? That was the worst shot possible with technology. Now, if we, if we got like a shotgun in Nuclear Throne, if we get right up in an enemy's face and hit them, I think that that's great for our business. If we stand far away, we're fucked. But right up close and personal does a lot of damage. So we're looking for like, what, what's my ideal outcome here? That was a perfect opportunity there. Uh, I would love to have... Blue candle? Like blue or red candle? Would at least give us an out. Um, and I could, I could really use an out. RoboBaby 2.0, you are holding it down, man. Just let me focus on the dodging, you handle everything else. Yeah, I would, I would really love a, a blue candle pickup right now. I really thought that I would get out of that without getting hit. It's okay, let these guys walk on the spikes. This is still Necropolis 1. Yeah, okay, let's do this. I'm ready. Mask of Infamy is actually pretty easily countered by me. In a weird way, you're gonna think I'm crazy for this, but we have a run that's kind of synergistic. Because our rate of fire is so long, it actually, or so low, I guess. It actually gives me a pretty good opportunity to reposition RoboBaby 2.0 as necessary without fucking up my own thing. Halo is good. Very good for us. Dark Bomb is good. This is another great defensive item, and I was talking about needing defensive items. This has been showing up like crazy lately, and I really appreciate it. It looked like a secret room location to me. Balls of Steel? Bad gas? That's not a tears upgrade. That's not a tears upgrade either, but still, Balls of Steel, thank you. And two of clubs, I'm just gonna pop it right away. Let's try this one. Give me a Joker card. For the next floor, of course. So, with the Halo, we're still firing very slowly. That's what I was uh, gonna check there. But we got a chance. Definitely gonna put a bomb down there. This might end up being one of those runs where it's like, you know, our, our DPS is awful. Oh yeah, red candle, man. Our DPS is pretty awful, but our, um... Our run is almost unlosable, man? I don't want to say that yet, but we've got way too much stuff that's great for us defensively to, to be too nervous about this. And every win is, is marching us closer and closer and closer and closer and closer to the very special milestone of 100. Which scares and titillates me in in equal parts. You want me to reroll my whole run again, don't you? I know you, game. No, okay, even better. <laughs> well, we can't take Flat Penny, but it's the thought that counts, I suppose. Bob's brain we will take. Because we have such a low rate of fire, I think we can use it pretty easily. Um and we're, we're hobbling together some kind of weird, you know, Voltron run here. But I think it's gonna work. And you know, when we have to use our tears to deal damage, they're not bad. And now we've got like three different things that we can throw at enemies as soon as the room starts to be like, okay, it's our time to shine. 
We hit him with the blue or red candle. Then we hit him with the Bob's brain. Then we hit him with the tears. And, you know, it's working out pretty well. It's probably not the ideal way to do a run. Oh, we got the Robo Baby 2.0. I couldn't forget about you. It's actually like we got a great fucking team going on here. I'm very proud of this team, that we, this teamwork that we're displaying. I'm just gonna stack up raw HP and basically just count my blessings that it seems like this run's going relatively well. Thank you, Bob's brain. That was that was beautiful. Uh, donation machine, I am gonna be a little unkind to you. Uh, really wish you'd given me one more cent. It would have made my job slightly easier, but okay. It's all good. And I'll donate my last three cents to you, because Humbling Bundle I'm expecting is gonna work out pretty nicely. Actually, can we... Okay, you're at 170. I want to try something. Now you're at 166. Look at that. Turned to profit. Donated two extra cents, and then it broke. <laughs> I'm not gonna say that that was 100% fantastic, but it wasn't bad either. And after this, this is our Eden run, so we're on a random run next. It's, it's a little... Hilarious to me that the random run that I'm most worried about is Judas just because of the low HP start. Can't play that. Um, okay. Well, thank you. That was actually really good. Uh, I, I am worried about the low HP start. I would rather play like like Maggie than Judas at this point just because it's, it's all or nothing at all. You know, O-Town style. Oh, that was very dangerous. Robo Baby! You gotta get in there. My rate of fire is so bad. All right, uh, well, obviously we're just hoping for the Polaroid here. And by hoping for, I mean, like, guaranteed to take. There's no contingency for it not showing up. And no chance that that ends up happening to begin with. Gotta get rid of that. Yeah, dodge right into that, but that's okay. We do have Big Fan if we want to do that. Surprisingly hard to fight Mom and her minions. First, which is, it would be a great game for Rareware in the early 2000s. But, um, yeah, surprisingly difficult to do so without the ability to fire, like, more than once every two and a half seconds. But that's what our familiars are for, I suppose. The sun does nothing for us here, so there's, like, no temptation. Man, that rate of fire is just not very good. <laughs> that's exactly what it is. All right, I'll tell you what, let's try this one again. Luck down. I'm not feeling too excited about that, so we'll go pick up our sun card again. We should have a pretty good counter for the envy fight. I did run over the spikes myself there, so that's uh, not something I'm very proud of. Good miss there, yeah. I mean, that's the other thing with technology. The hitbox is fucking terrible. How many times can I walk on those spikes without taking damage? That's that's the only Guinness record I would ever qualify for, but it's a good one. Hotly contested. I'm very proud of that shot, I'll admit. Curse Room contains not a guppy item, I can't help but notice. That's my least favorite. Pulse Worm. Well, that would be completely worthless if we could even take it, which we can't. So, let's not get too bent out of shape about it. This is actually, like, very much one of the strangest runs I've had. Uh, we, we've had some runs that are strange, like, oh, get the D4. Get, uh, incredibly high damage Dr. Fetus shots that explode on contact. Like, those have been weird runs. This one is, like, if, if you saw this rate of fire, you would be like, there is no way that this run is winnable. But in actuality, there's just no way that it's losable, which is kind of amazing. Money, the money is money. Uh, we could use it on an arcades donation machine, but actually, our, I forgot our donation machine was already full to the brim, so disregard that. Way too many exits here for me to enjoy. A little bit of pressure there. If we'd missed, we probably could have been hit. Don't! Ah, I missed. And he disappeared. Give us an angry spider, which is just quite uncouth, if you ask me. How you didn't die there is also unbelievable. I would give, like, both of my left nuts for any damage or tears upgrade at this point. 
Please, give me, like, the mark on our deal with the devil. Give me a chance at it, at least. Give me Tammy's head? I don't even know what that would do here. It just sounds interesting. It feels interesting, so I'll take it. This is a lot of money. I'm not displeased about this. Uh, okay. Yeah, sure. Makes a lot of sense. We have gone in the wrong direction again. This is becoming, uh, relatively par for the course for me. And it's yet another dead end. No tinted rocks. I don't think we can get small rock anyway, and we don't really want spirit hearts, so... It's not that big of a deal when we go in the wrong direction here. It's agonizingly slow rate of fire. It's... It's burning me a buttercup like the special features on the There's Something About Mary DVD. Probably the easiest way to get that done. At least we'll have a little bit of a benefit against uh, bosses because of the tick. Like, I rarely get a chance to see how the tick works because I... It's not just that the tick is not the best trinket, it's that it's like, you know, it's the only trinket you get to keep. It's like you're like you're a lot more discerning in your choices of who to marry than you are in your choices of who to date because the idea is that marriage is supposed to be permanent, right? That's the thing with the tick. The tick is like sight on scene, will you marry me? Every other trinket is like, well, you can try me out for a little while, and if, if we find that it's not really a, a, a relationship that works well for us, we can just hold down the control key and, you know, go our separate ways. Let's actually hit here. Tick isn't like that, but that being said, it is, you know, you can form a functional life with it. I don't think there's any debate there. Oh, come on. You think I'm going to let RoboBaby 2.0 get the kill there? I don't think so. So, the number one thing that I'm hoping for here is a deal with the devil. A guppy item is huge. We gotta break the... Aw, oh, that was not very good. That ended up working out surprisingly well until it didn't. didn't. Um, yeah, we need to deal with the devil. And then the deal with the devil needs to provide us with not shit. A guppy item or, you know, high damage... Good, good use of that. High damage uh, or increased rate of fire. I don't even know off the top of my head what items give you increased rate of fire. I think the Pact is one. I think the Mark gives you a small increase in the rate of fire. We don't really want Placenta yet, at least. Whore of Babylon. We have to take it, but there's almost no way this ends up being useful for us unless we come across a, you know, very conveniently placed Guppy's head. Or, sorry, Guppy's paw, in which case it becomes amazing, but... It's got to be straight down to get to our uh, boss fight here. Where do we use the sun card? It's it's the only thing that I'm still keeping defensively minded here. We're going to hold on to that sun card just in case we fuck it up so badly that we need a full health uh, card. Which is what it's great at doing. Balls of Steel is also fine, but it, it doesn't drop the balls on the ground. Thereby making it some semi-useful. Sorry, semi-useless for me right now. I don't think we really need to go back for that money at this point. Might be a little optimistic, like a, a track off of Radiohead's 2001 divisive album, Kid A. Just, just keep it at bay here. The only thing, there's only one guiding philosophy for me on this run, and that's never fucking miss, because life is too short, man. You know how Wayne Gretzky said, you know, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take? Which is a remarkable quote from someone who is mostly, I'm a very prolific goal scorer as well, but mostly renowned as a playmaker. Anyway, I'm not trying to say that he's being a poser, it just doesn't make any sense. I wonder if that's just like a Canadian myth, and instead, um, like maybe in America, that's like a Michael Jordan quote, and in the UK, it's like Michael Owen. You miss 100% of the strikes, you don't strike. Anyway. Well, we also miss a certain percentage of the shots that we do take, which admittedly he did not argue that that point. Um, but it's worth noting because every time we miss here, it, it makes my butt sore. Because it takes another 25 minutes to get a charge ready. Oh, that was, that was my own fault there. Can't deny that. I think we got super lucky, honestly, that we got... Uh, Dark Bum, and we got super lucky that we got Bob's Brain, and we got super lucky that we started with Robo Baby. All of these are actually working well in conjunction with one another to save me the indignity of what would be a losing run without this, like, every everyone working in concert kind of thing that we got going on here. Okay. Well, we do have Spirit Hearts back here, so we don't have to sweat that. 
Probably do not want the paralysis card. Paralysis pill, you know what I mean. Balls of steel. We'll pop this. And then we'll head up to the cathedral. I don't think there's really much that I can do on the cathedral to make this work better or worse. I think we're pretty much just strapped into our... Strapped into our Isaac chair and we're gonna play it until we finish the run. So let's head up to the cathedral. We could use the sun card as a compass slash map. I really, by the way, believe that the sun card... Not that it needs a buff, because it is really good. But I think it would be nice if the sun card also showed you at least where the first secret room is. Like... But maybe both? Because it does you know... It, it doesn't give you full mapping anymore. The second secret room... I'm trying to think back to vanilla. The second secret room never showed up on anything. But the secret room showed up on the... It used to show up on the map. Then they added the blue map that shows both secret rooms. I'm not as against that decision as I originally was. You know, knee-jerk reactions are rarely the way you want it represented long-term, but... Ah, uh, it sort of worked. I, I'll live with it anyway. I still wish that the Sun card maybe got, you know, the benefit of, of being able to show you at least the one secret room. I don't think it's gonna happen, though. I wouldn't hold your breath, at least. Well, I mean, at the very least, you're gonna be holding your breath for, like, four months, which... I did not see the David Blaine special, but I don't believe that even he was able to achieve those superhuman feats, so... I think it's okay. I can't believe that this is the wrong way. It's gotta be up and to the left, I guess. It's actually a very good thing for us. It's a small uh, cathedral. You know, this ain't St. Paul's, this is like Joe's Methodist. I would, I can't stress enough that the, there's an agonizing wait between each and every shot here. We can tell a fucking story. We could sing a ballad about each shot. But anytime we can land all four of them uh, on the same enemy at the same time, it's, it's good for business. We gotta check this out. Guppy. <laughs> Even Guppy would only speed this up a little bit. Oh, I'm, I'm a smart dude. But we can still uh, get back to full health thanks to Holy Mantle. I don't really care about this judgment. I kind of care about my sanity, and my sanity is going to benefit from finishing this run a little faster. Because I want to get off quad shot Eve's Mascara's Wild Ride. What if I just leave? It might be faster to just leave Rainbow Baby in the middle, or sorry, Robo Baby in the middle. And then whenever I get Bob's Brain, shoot it in there. Whenever I get Red Candle, shoot it in there. And whenever I get a tear, shoot it in there. It's actually, it seems like a fairly good strategy here. It's very sad when Robo Baby ends up still being one of your best damage dealers this late in the, this late in the game. But you know, necessity is the mother of invention, man. And necessity is reality. That doesn't really make any sense. But it's necessary for us to do this, is what I'm trying to say. Oh my god, this rate of fire. It's still going to be fine. I mean, as you saw on this floor, we only took one hit and it was from Isaac. It's just a very strange way to have to build a run. So, just please God, don't make me eat my words and give me soy milk, Curse of the Blind. Okay, Curse of Darkness means no Curse of the Blind. Chubb is fine. HP is fine. Tech point five is probably amazing here. It'll shoot more than we actually shoot, which is hilarious. And, um, yeah, I mean, this is good. That's gotta be our boss fight up there at the top. And considering we have full health, um, there's, there's basically no way we end up losing this one. I'm assuming tech point five scales with your damage, thereby making it really good for us because, you know, we have Eve's Mascara. And Quad Shot. I don't know if Quad Shot factors into it, but I think it should. Maybe it lowers? I don't know. It doesn't matter, basically. We're going to be completely fine either way. But it's, it's definitely one of the most harrowing, completely fine runs I think I've ever had. And rooms like this are gonna make me, you know, really wish that I could just use the death card or blow open the door or something like that. At least we have piercing shots. Like, if we had this run, it's easy to forget, you know? If we had had Eve's Mascara but no technology, oh my god, the fact that we wouldn't have had any form of piercing shots might have been enough to sink my morale, and that might have been enough to sink the streak. But this is all, you know... 
director's cut, you know, inside baseball studios. That's I've got I've confused James Lipton's show with another ESPN show. Um, but both of those would be uh, potentially quite risky for me. Or, like those permutations, those situations. Can't deny though that Tech Point Five is really holding it down here, allowing me to actually stand a much better chance to have a good time on this run. I'm actually in danger of smiling a little bit as we come close to the end here, which I did not think was going to happen. Good Bob's brain shot. I think you're almost dead anyway, so that should finish you off, and that will finish you off. Don't give me any treasure chests. You know, if you give me a treasure chest, there's a chance we can get a tears upgrade out of that, and I ain't having that shit. I backed out of that impression halfway through. Inadvisable. It just does not work, right? It does nothing. Or maybe it even lowered our rate of fire a little further, but it's hard to tell because, you know, divide by zero error. Good stuff. I'm, I don't care if we get hit. We have so much HP. We have a sun card. In fact, I'm going to use that sun card right away. It did next to no damage. I would not advise doing that as an offensive uh, push against Blue Baby. However, the run is over. And the streak will continue up to 76. That's exciting. For now, uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. But for now, thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time. Oh, I gotta hit the space bar so I don't accidentally have to redo that chest. There we go.